All right. So lucky day, you guys get to get me uh, for two two back to back presentations. Um, so we'll see we'll see how this goes. So this is a rack manifold guideline. Um, this is just describing a white paper that is in final review right now, looking at liquid cooling rack manifolds, what key considerations there are, um, looking at what's required versus what's recommended, and this will be giving an overview of that um, that white paper. So this the the contributors here the the or the authors rather on this white paper, um, Burhanu, Edward, David from Intel. Uh, unfortunately, last minute, Burhanu, who was going to be presenting this, was unable to make it, so I am, I am filling in on his behalf. Before we get started, let me just start with um, acknowledgement and showcasing, I think, a lot of this community collaboration that went into um, this, this knowledge and this white paper uh, and the, the information that we'll be sharing today. You know, companies like Intel, Cool IT, Foxconn, Inventec. Wistron, Delta, Chiacharan, JBill, Sajin, Supermicro, MG Cooling, and Southco are all contributors on this white paper. All right, so with that, uh, let's get started with an uh, over overview, a summary of what we'll be looking at, right? So as with many aspects of liquid cooling, it's a, it's a fairly, in a sense, it's a mature industry. There's lots of different custom solutions out there, and these, uh, what one aspect of that, right, is manifold designs can be very custom. Um, they may not interchange well. Um, and really, this is looking at, you know, what are the features that could be homogenized? What are the key aspects of manifold design, manufacturing, assembly, test, um, that the industry could could help understand and, and share the knowledge of the importance of these, you know, key features, what is required versus what's recommended, um, looking at, you know, surface treatment, quality control, and assembly considerations. So this is not this is not a specification, but is really just sharing that knowledge, um, starting out with understanding key manifold parameters. To begin, you know, looking at design considerations, and again, the paper goes into much more detail on this. This is looking at vertical um, manifolds. This could be either single or double installation within the rack. The spacing will be dependent on the rack spacing, right? A standard 19-inch rack will have RU spacing, uh, an ORV3 rack will have OU spacing, and that will, that will affect the, um, the spacing of the manifold as well. Geometry, uh, this, this white paper, right, doesn't, doesn't mandate any geometry, really only looking at what are those, those key interfaces. So whether you use square or circular, you, that all will all kind of tie in with what manufacturing process you have, what your, your end requirements are, and um, things that we'll get into later on this. Looking at CDU connection size, those sizes, again, based on rack flow requirement, um, similar with the server loop connection size, based on the system flow requirement and what impedance you're running through your blades and what your um, flow requirements for cooling are in that case. Of course, there needs to be safety features and control features depending on whether you're using an um, you know, in-rack CDU or end-of-row CDU as well. Continuing on with the manifold considerations, um, termination, right, could be either straight or tapered. Um, and then also looking at UQDs, UQDBs using the straight O-ring boss. So for those not familiar, uh, this is the uni universal quick disconnect and universal quick disconnect blind mate. This is a specification on the OCP uh, contributions portal, and in fact, we actually have some vendors that have used that specification to have their products on the OCP marketplace. So this paper looks at, you know, how how do you, you can implement that UQD, UQDB into the manifold um, and make sure that it all interfaces uh, appropriately. Another aspect of this design consideration, um, as you may know, blind mate. Quick disconnects will generally have a small amount of float or radial misalignment uh, adjustment that they can do. And so this paper gives an example of a use case where maybe there's more misalignment that you need to account for. And it shows a design example of a mechanism in the server that will help increase that misalignment uh, adjustment up to um, really whatever, whatever, it's a pretty flexible design to, to whatever that misalignment may be that you need to account for. 
And finally, on the design considerations, um, material selection is a big one. I know there's a couple papers that the cold plate works uh, subproject put out through the fluids work stream last year, looking at um, PG25 treated water. I know that's a huge consideration, um, but this this paper does talk about material selection being compatible not only with the fluid being used, but also all the components within that wetted material loop. Shown here is an example of the uh, a wetted materials list for PG25, uh, the different types of stainless steel, copper, brazing material, um, and elastomers and plastics that can be compatible with a PG25 wetted loop. From there, um, goes into operating conditions. So looking at the maximum operating pressure, uh, just really based on your use case, the minimum burst pressure based on the standard of three times that max operating working pressure. The flow distribution, right, must be uniform flow. Um, often when we calculate flow through a server, a node, rack, um, even row, assume a negligible flow or um, a neg negligible impedance in the manifold. And so, of course, your design must have very low uh, impedance so that, that that can hold true and you aren't getting, you aren't starving one server uh, because another one is getting all the fluid. Geometry, like I mentioned earlier, you know, left to the discretion of manufacturer and user, really what is um, driving that need. And then the operating temp ranges here and shipping temp ranges, uh, I believe they're, they are aligned with the UQD and UQDB spec. Um, you would assume that this, this manifold could be shipped with those UQDs and so on that um, would need similar temp ranges. Surface treatment, we'll also be getting into a little more lately and uh, later, a little more later in this talk and then there's more detail in the paper as well. The testing requirements here uh, largely mirror those operating conditions, right? And then if you look at, in the paper, there's actually standards tied to a lot of these. Um, so 100 PSIG, 300 PSIG for burst pressure comes from that UQD, UQDB components um, specification and then Looking at the temperature testing, flow resistance through the manifold, uh, fluid leak, especially at these seals, using O-ring seals, um, and if there's any welding, making sure that that's hermetically sealed as well, and then as well as looking at corrosion, and then a mechanical resistance, shock and vibe, rack level test for these manifolds as well. There's other accelerated tests detailed in the um, paper, so please uh, you know, reach out to me and, and I can connect you with the authors to, to get, that, get that information and then it should be on the contribution portal fairly soon as well. Next, uh, looking at manufacturing con uh, considerations, right, there's always different options, always different ways to manufacture components, uh, so this paper just goes through some of those trade-offs, right? If you machine from billet, you can have a lot of control over your material, which can be very important for your wetted materials list, uh, but you know it can be much more costly to machine that way. Making from standard pipe size can depend on what's available, what's readily available, but can be much cheaper. Um, and then like I mentioned earlier, welding has to be done in a, such a way that it is hermetically sealed, and so, and then finishing um, specifically for those O-ring Seating and sealing is, is hugely important. So um, those are just some of the manufacturing considerations highlighted in that document. Uh, one example also of the surface treatment, right? So passivation being required to be able to handle these different fluids um, and then also looking at the other options such as pickling, electro polishing, or protective coating that are recommended um, but may not be actually required for all manifolds depending on the cost trade-offs or the use case. The paper also covers uh, quality control, so looking at manufacturing process alignment, uh, first article inspection, form fit function, the post-production cleaning methods, um, right, requiring washing, air drying can be recommended, seam pressure washing recommended, ultrasonic steam uh, bath is recommended, but you know, understand that that can be costly, expensive, and so really that all those trade-offs depend on the user and, and um, Right, not trying to mandate everything up front just because it's maybe the ideal case. Finally, right, in designing a manifold, need to consider these assembly considerations. So looking at flow control, whether it's at the CDU or if you have some sort of control valve system, so if you have an end of row CDU, um, be able to control the manifold 
for that rack. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the pressure drop um, installation, you know, making it easy to not only install but also surface, uh, sorry, service, um, end of life, all that, all that good stuff. And then, like I mentioned as well, terminations using, you know, easy to connect, easy to disconnect devices, um, such as universal quick disconnects or really you know, what, what is needed for that use case. And of course, uh, safety features will have to be considered like a high point bleed vent or a low point drain. So in summary, right, there's, um, th this paper discusses kind of the whole range of manifold design considerations, manufacturing, testing, you know, what folks need to look at if they're gonna be implementing this either in a standard 19 inch rack or an ORV3 rack. And the intent here is really just to share, um, share that knowledge uh, and, and show, um, right, how to, implement these rack or these manifolds into a liquid cooling and, and help ease that adoption uh, going forward. So uh, there's recommendations, like I said, uh, provided in the paper on the quality control, surface treatment, uh, installation, and you know maybe eventually building off of this to, to help create kind of a, a commercial off-the-shelf type manifold that, that can work uh, in any rack. So with that, like I mentioned, um, if there are questions, follow up, you know, please, I can, I can get you connected with the authors. I can also answer to the best of my ability. Um, we can review the paper. It's been reviewed in the, in the cold plate community initially, um, but absolutely open for more feedback and, and collaboration on that going forward. And so please get involved with the cold plate community and um, that's all I got, thank you. <laughs>